So I was really, really upset because I'm like, I just don't understand where my money is going. And if I am paying off a debt that you accrued, just say that. But trying to trick me and convince me that this is what the actual bill is, is fucking asinine. It's not making sense. Just show me the account information or call customer service in front of me because that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Show me the breakdown. What portion is going to the finance of this phone? What portion is going to the finance of the iPhone? And what portion is the actual bill of this phone? What's the half of it? And he brought up the bill and showed it to me. And that shit still wasn't adding up because it wasn't a breakdown, it was just the balance. And again, I still had my own Android. So at the end of the day, if push came to shove, you could take your iPhone back. Um, you can pay me in installments. I'm gonna use what I already paid for and I already have. You know what I mean? If I really wanted an iPhone, I would have bought myself an iPhone. Could have bought myself an iPhone, given the amount of money I spent on this bill. He wouldn't explain to me how the cost was where the cost was. What he did do is scream, yell, and curse me out. And he used all this aggression and anger and rage to kind of deter me from even continuing the conversation. Cause I'm just sitting here like, why am I getting fucking cursed out about this? This ain't even my bill. Like, dude, all you have to do is explain this. Just call them. Let me hear. Let's just go over the bill. At the end of the day, ultimately, this is in your name. This affects your credit score. You're the one who actually really needs the help with this bill. I genuinely feel as though that the only reason he had to find a way where it would seem like he was doing some kind of good deed by saying in the first place, oh, well, I see you make content. He knew I had a YouTube channel, he knew I had a Facebook, he knew I had an Instagram, he knew I had a TikTok. So I thought he was actually just paying very close attention to my hobbies and things that I like. And maybe he was, he may have been, but what I do know for sure, and two things for certain, is he wanted help with that bill. And this is out of pure exhaustion because I had to go to work that night and I had spent all morning arguing with him. I was just like, just take my fucking card and go to the damn phone store and pay that shit. Just get away from you because I'm actually really damn mad. And that was one of our first really big arguments, but it was a reasonable reason to be upset. Like, I feel like you're hoodwinking me. You're trying to swindle me. And he said that he was just like, I just don't want you to feel like you're paying for something uh, that you're not or you're paying for or you're paying more than you should be paying. And I was just like, I do. Can I see your $300 payments? Can I see your $200 addition payments on this planet? Because I don't see shit. All I see what you showed me is what I've paid. And I'm just trying to understand the balance as of right now and why I need to pay again. Why would I need to pay again? That's five hundred dollars in in, a, in less than a month on a phone plan. It was because he was behind on it and he was using my money to catch up on the bill. Since it's under your name and I'm a part of that plan, if you want to change anything or deactivate that line, you still have to keep financing that phone. You're going to be hit with a cancellation fee because you're terminating a contract, and that was more expensive than he could afford. So that's why he kept the phone and just chose the struggle. And I was just like, all you had to do was tell me, this is not about money as much as it is about me feeling like you were tricking me. I felt tricked. Anybody would feel tricked. If you pay a bill one day and then two weeks later, more money comes out of your account, but that bill has been paid and your, your balance has been brought up to date, you're going to call customer service and raise some questions because that doesn't make any sense, especially if it was nothing that you put in place or planned on. So I paid that bill. The more that I used my new iPhone to make content, I slowly began to see that my ex-boyfriend really wasn't in support of it at all. He would watch all of my TikToks. He had a request that I do not show my feet or my legs in any content. Um, I guess for, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess there's, there's weirdos everywhere. I have to assume it was related to that. But with everything that I know now, you never really know. He did request that I don't show my feet or my legs in any content, so I didn't. There were a few times where I slipped up, but I was like, after I sat up here, created the content, filmed it, edited it, uploaded it, I'm not gonna go down, I'm not gonna go delete it and start again or tweak it a little because you saw the corner of my ankle, it's dumb. And he was not religious, he was not Muslim, so. But it was just a request of his own, and I was just like, oh, 
well, you got a man now, you're in a relationship. You do need to consider what he's asking of you if it's something that's very easily fixable. So I compromised, it was just my legs and feet. It's not the end of the world, right? When I would film though, whenever I would take out the phone and film, he would make like snarky comments and over the weeks to months, they just got worse and worse and worse. While I was filming, no matter what it was, he would actually go and like smack over a prop that I was filming. And because I knew he was doing it on purpose to get this random rise out of me, to bother me, I feel like the man just needed attention. And instead of asking for attention or coming out and giving me a hug or a kiss or whatever, he's gonna go and do what children do. I'm gonna go mess up stuff. He would knock over props that I was filming and I didn't give it any attention and I would pick it back up and put it back where it was and continue filming and he would knock it over again. And I was just like, I'm not gonna mention this or even bring this up because I feel like you're baiting me. If I overreact to something so insignificant, I genuinely do feel as though you're going to blame my reaction on me even though you are provoking me. So I was just like, that's so damn childish. Like, anytime that I actually brought the film out and filmed, period, if he wasn't physically doing something, he was making a very negative comment. And he would say, like, you have to film everything eventually the comments started to get really annoying and one night after dinner i said well, you gave me this phone for content creating you specifically gave me this phone for content creating so that's what i'm doing and he shut up he completely shut up because he knew it was true but he was never gonna you know what i mean like he, he wasn't gonna challenge that because to challenge it would be to just say, honey, I need a hug, I need attention, I want your undivided attention, and when you're filming this five second shot, I just feel like I'm not getting the attention that I want. In little ways, he did start bullying me. And he would always say like, you just can't take a joke, you're just too sensitive. I'm a very sarcastic person and I play way too much. He was doing shit that was actually mean and weird, but it would be seen on the outside looking in as just a joke, but it wasn't, it was, it was intentional. It was intentional. For you to be 43 years old and do certain things just didn't make any sense to me. But I digress. My ex-boyfriend came to me one day and he was like, I'm putting on weight, I'm gaining weight. And it's because we eat so much fast food, we eat out too often. Now, he had not taken me out to eat or bought me food since our first date. That was the only time. And I didn't impress the issue too much because I'm just like, he's in school full time, he works part time, whatever. If you're over and I'm ordering myself something to eat, I'm going to ask, do you want something? I'm going to cover it. If you're at my house, I do feel like you are a guest. So I should make sure that you're okay. And I do value the time that you invest and spend with me. So I made sure that he was always fed. And when he made the comment about himself gaining weight because we ate so much fast food, he was like, you need to cook more. You need to cook more home, home cooked meals. And I was just like, but you know, my work schedule is completely insane. Like along with my own children, I have a career. I'm very, very busy. As long as everybody eats, does it really, really matter? But I wanted to be compromising and negotiate. I didn't want to be, you know, it's my way or the highway. So I did begin cooking dinner at least five to six nights a week, even after 12 hour shifts when I was tired. Anytime that he came over, I made sure that he had a home cooked meal. And I mean like a whole entire four course meal. There were appetizers, it was always dessert. His plates were hefty. And there's content on my page where you can see that in my earlier TikToks.
Lord, thank you for this pizza that we're about to eat to nourish our bodies and bless us, blessing us to see another day. And <laughs> what are you over there doing? Are you fucking choking or dying? <laughs> and and uh, blessing, uh, bless, bless this house for love and nurturing and educational purposes. Amen. <laughs> I think you might need some prayer for that prayer.